In this video we'll find out how to do inverse Laplace transforms um, of, of functions of s such that the inverse transform um, involves a step function. So you'll recall this is the uh, formula for the Laplace transform of a step function and looking at that we can see that the following formula would hold for an inverse Laplace transform. So here's the formula for the inverse Laplace transform that results in some sort of a step function. So let's take a look at applying this to a few examples. So the first example we'll start with is this one, which you can see that we can modify a little bit. We can pull the 7 out of the uh, inverse transform and we can move the e to the minus 3s off the top of the fraction and then we get this which you can see matches the form that we have back here so what we have is a situation where C equals 3 and capital F of S is equal to 1 over S squared so um, the result of doing the inverse transform then by the formula above should be 7 times um, f of t minus 3, where little f is yet to be determined, times the step function u of t minus 3. So then the only question left is, what is little f? Well, um, if we look back over here, if, if capital F of s is 1 over s squared, then little f of t would simply be t. Okay, so that's our function. Uh, f of t equals t, but we have to apply it to t minus 3. So when we do, um, it's really just the identity function. It says when f works on something, it leaves it as, it's, as, it, as itself. So what we end up with is 7 times t minus 3 times the unit step function uh, with translation 3. So that's our final uh, answer there in this case. So that was a pretty simple example. Let's go on and take a look at one that's a little bit harder. So now we'll look at a different example. I, I told you it's going to be more difficult, but it really won't be much more difficult than the one we just did. Let's start off in the same way. We'll pull that uh, 5 out of the uh, operator, the inverse transform, and we'll move the e to the minus 2s off the top of the fraction. So you can see that when we do that, um, we've got and set up where we can see already that our C is going to be 2. Now over here this is looking like the transform of the sine function except that we have an omega of 4 so we need a 4 on the top of this guy. So let's just put a 4 there and at the same time we can divide by a 4 out in front. Um, so we've really multiplied by a 4 and a 1 fourth both and pulled the one-fourth out of the operator. And so now if we take a look at what we have, this is our f of s. And so f of t, I didn't leave myself much room for that. Let's see if I can erase that. All right, and so f of t, little f of t in this case, is going to equal sine of omega t or sine sine of 4t. So we know our little f of t, we know our c, we've got that constant of 5 fourths out in front, so we'll have 5 fourths times little f of t minus 2 times u of t minus 2 but little f is sine of 4t, so um, we'll have 5 fourths sine of 4 times t minus 2, and then times the step function u of t minus 2. If there's any concern about that u of t minus 2 multiplying the 4 times t minus 2 before the sine function, we could fix that by putting some square brackets in there like that. So that's the uh, inverse transform of that function. And we'll do one more and then call it good on these. 
This is our last example for finding an inverse Laplace transform and I would suggest perhaps you just pause the video at this point and try doing this one um, yourself and then check and see if you get uh, what I get. So the first thing I want to do with this, uh, like the others we've done, is pull that 2 out of there. So I've got 2 times the inverse transform and I take the e to the minus 5s off the top of the fraction and we get 1 over s plus 3. So we can see that uh, c is going to have the value uh, 5 in this case. So what do we want to do next? Well, um, you, that, that part here we can see is looking like the transform of an exponential function. In fact, um, if this were f of s, then what we'd have is that um, f of t would be e to the minus 3t. Okay, so there's our, our little f of t, and we know what our c is, that's 5, so the inverse transform in this case then is 2. Um, we have e to the minus 3t, but it's applied to t minus 5, so that's e um, to the minus 3 times the quantity t minus 5, because we have to have this translation shown here, where c is 5. And then that's, uh, that's times the step function, u of t minus 5. All right, and so that's what we get. We could tidy this up a little bit. The e to the minus 3 times uh, t minus 5 is the same as 2. e to the minus 3t, e to the 15, times u of t minus 5. And e to the 15 is just a constant, so we could pull that out. That's 2 e to the 15. And then we have e to the minus 3t times u of t minus 5. And so that's our inverse transform in this case.